In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up a progress bar in Storyline using only one variable. So this progress bar is easy to set up and also very easy to maintain when you have to add or delete slides. First, I will show you how the finished progress bar works. I've set it up at the bottom of my slides. And you can see that the progress bar fills up as I move through my course. It's set up in 10% steps, but you can use any number of steps you like. And as you can see, the progress bar does not fill up if we visit slides again. Now we will take a look at the built-in variable we're going to use. It's called menu progress. I've added the variable as a reference on all of my slides using the slide master to help me while building this. Let's switch to the slide master. By inserting a reference of the variable, I can also get a little bit more info about the variable when I hover over it. Now we can see that this variable gives us the percentage of slides in the menu the learner has viewed. This is exactly what I need here because I want all the slides in the menu to be counted. As I've already said, this variable makes it very easy for you if you have to add or delete slides because it will always give you the right percentage. So you don't have to change anything. I don't want to go into too much detail here, but let's just say that before this built-in variable was available, setting up and maintaining a progress bar was much more time consuming. Let's take a look at the progress bar. I've inserted a rectangle. As you can see in the states of the rectangle, I've created a state for every 10% step. When I open one of the states, right click on the shape and go to format shape, you can see that it's a gradient filling with two stops. I'll show you how to do this in just a moment. First, why did I use a gradient filling and not just simply change the width of, the, of my rectangle? First, this way, it's a lot easier to give an exact percentage of your shape. If you were to work with the size of the shapes, you would have to calculate the width of your shape according to your steps and slide size. And secondly, you would also have to use a background shape. So how do you set up the gradient filling? I'm going to switch to a project where I don't have created it yet. First, you click on View, then Slide Master. Make sure you're on the first slide of your master. Now insert a rectangle. Next, I'm putting it at the bottom of my slide. Now this will be my normal state. I want it to be gray, so I'm going to change the shape fill. I don't want an outline, so I'm going to change this as well. Now we already have our 0% step. On to the other steps. I will add a new state. I'm going to name it and then I will format this shape. I will choose gradient fill. My angle has to be set at 0. And my first stop will be at 10%. You can move the shape window to the side to get an idea of what you're doing. I type in 10% and then pick the color I want for my progress bar. Now you have to switch to the second stop in this drop down. It will also be set at 10%. For the color, I will pick the same color I have chosen for the normal state filling. It was this gray. Initially, there is a third stop, which we don't need for this purpose. So we're going to remove it. And there you have it. That's my 10% step. For the other steps, you have to duplicate the 10% step, give it a name and change the stop position of the first stop in the format shape window. Once you have set up all of your states, it's time to set up your triggers. We're going to stay in the slide master and in the first slide, we will set up a trigger for every step of the progress bar. You only have to set this, up, set this up here. No need to put triggers on your slides. Our action will be to change the state of the progress bar, this is the name I've given the rectangle, to 10%. The when should be when the timeline starts on 
this slide. In the conditions, we want two conditions. First, the progress bar should go to 10% if the variable menu progress is greater than or equal to the value 10. The second condition is that the variable has to be less than 20%, which is our next step. The two conditions have to be linked by AND. Now click on OK and copy and paste this trigger nine times. Now you just have to swap out the values of the state we want to change to and the values in the conditions. Until you reach your 100% step, where you only need one condition, which is that the variable is equal to 100. And now you're all set. You may need different variables for your project. You can look up all the built-in variables in Storyline by clicking on Manage Project Variables in the Trigger tab. Under Built-in, you can see that there are many helpful variables. For example, you could use Menu Section Progress if you want to build a separate progress bar for every section in your menu. If you're not sure what a variable does, you can insert it as a reference, like I did here, and hover with your mouse or just try a preview. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions on how to do this, or if you created this progress bar in one of your courses, please let me know in the comments below. That's all for this video. Thanks for watching. Bye.